Welcome to JSA TV, where we're covering the latest stories, trends, and innovations from the leaders in global connectivity, digital infrastructure, and the networks within. And we are coming to you live, that's right, live from Times Square, New York City, New York, and I'm sitting here with a fellow Chicagoan and, and Times Square yes. in New York City, um, my, my new friend, Mr. Craig Huffman. Craig is the CEO of Metro Edge Development partners. Craig, it was great talking bears a little bit with it you. It was awesome. Uh, beforehand, it was it was great that you and I were able to bring the Chicago weather yeah. to New York City. Exactly. With, with Good luck us. charm. Yeah, no, exactly. <laughs> exactly. So, Craig, let's jump right into it. Why don't you tell our viewers a little bit about the Metro Edge business model? Yeah, so Metro Edge is, Metro Edge is a commercial real estate firm. Uh, my background is 20 years real estate private equity firm, the firms that I founded and successfully exited. I founded Metro Edge in 2020 mm -hmm. with the idea that the business model would look at urban infill sites mm -hmm. for data center development mm -hmm. in addition to other assets. Really, our premise is we focus on real estate that sits at the intersection of technology yeah. and commercial real estate. Okay, so I'm going to go off script a little bit only because I feel like you can handle it. <laughs> I can. But, um, I, so uh, I work in uh, PR marketing, yes. been, been doing at, in, in data center and telecom technology industry for the last 13 years. Mm -hmm. One thing that I have noticed, particularly probably like in the last five years, is that where you and I call home, the Midwest, Absolutely. is becoming a dare I say, like technology hotspot? It is. Hot spot. It is. Tell, Absolutely. Tell, tell me why that's happening. I, I think some of the same factors that led to, because Chicago's in the middle of the country, yeah. you think about the rail system, mm -hmm. you think about shipping, you yeah. think about the history of Chicago as being a port city, a right. destination location. I think in a similar way, because when you talk about railway, you're talking about fiber yeah. running along the yeah. railways. And so the convenience and the fact that it's in the middle of the country, right? Yeah. Transit uh, via plane is certainly You've a got lot the easier. Great Lakes, right? Absolutely, there. Yeah. absolutely. So Chicago has a lot of natural advantages. Yeah. I think the city itself is warming up to data centers. I think there have been some misunderstandings about why data centers are important. I, I've been trying to break that myth for a long time. And, yeah. and honestly, you see it all over the country. Yeah. I think people have a misconception that data centers are net negative, mm -hmm. right? And and yet. The same people may communicate that using the very technology yes. that data centers support. And so on one hand, we all are addicted to the speed of technology today, yeah. right? Yeah. But on the other hand, many of us do not understand the infrastructure that supports that very technology. And yeah. data centers are an important part of that. And how that infrastructure is changing with the next generation Absolutely. of technology. Absolutely. And how important what it is that you're doing yeah. is to the future of not of the data center, of course, but of the technology of the of the breakthroughs yeah. that are happening within the data center. Absolutely. You have a direct uh, direct hand in what and what's happening there. I'm going to go back to the script now. I promise. No problem. Okay. So, how hard is it for newer players to break into the data center development industry? <laughs> that is a loaded question. It, it is sure very is. challenging. It sure is. I, I like to joke and say I'm not really a gambler. Mm -hmm. I learned in business school that the house always wins. Yeah. I would say that unless you have a lot of capital to put at risk, mm -hmm. the data center business may not be for you. Right. The cost of entry is a barrier to entry. And so ultimately, when you think about the price to build a new facility, over a thousand bucks a foot, when you talk about the equipment and the build outs, over two thousand bucks a foot, mm -hmm. those numbers are staggering compared to traditional real estate. And so this is a unique asset class. It certainly is important, but the costs are yeah. significant. And so if you're a startup working out of the basement of your home, it's difficult to envision a path where you can go build a yeah. 20 plus megawatt facility as we are contemplating in Chicago. Yeah, you're not going to uh, get a Manhattan apartment on minimum wage. No, right? no, absolutely right? not. Yeah. But um, OK, so uh, the last question, urban versus suburban. Another great so, question. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I, I, I think there's a unique opportunity when you think of urban. Yeah. So in the case of Chicago, we have a site on the near west side mm -hmm. of Chicago mm -hmm. located in a medical district, the Illinois Medical District. Mm -hmm. And one of the interesting things, the medical district has been around for almost 40 plus years. Yeah. And one of the things that happened when the medical district was created is they uh, cleared out 
land. They demolished older buildings and they created a space that now has hospitals, has all kinds of healthcare infrastructure yeah. that needs to lean into technology. Why is that relevant to the urban? Because as AI continues to expand, we're going to need to rethink the model of what a data center is. Yes. These campuses that are in suburban footprints yes. or remote locations ultimately are one model. I think there's also going to be an opportunity to say, how do we get closer or how do we get on the edge, right? Yeah. Pun intended. Yes. And how do we get closer to the end user? So yeah. I don't think it's either or. I think it's both. And I think for our model, we believe that areas that have seen an exodus, whether it was 50, 60 years ago, yeah. oftentimes the infrastructure still is in place. And it creates an opportunity to reimagine, could we rethink how data centers replace manufacturing facilities or the kinds of development yes. that at one point in time was the only way we could think about greenfield. Yeah. And so with data centers and our need to access or provide greater access to technology, right, yes. to all that we all rely upon, it's important. And so the urban, I think, will increasingly become a more important part of the model, yeah. in part because of what AI is pushing us to look at. You know, um, I feel like we could talk the entire afternoon we absolutely about, could. about just this, but I love what you said about that because, like, it getting the data center as close to those hospitals as humanly possible. Absolutely. And the latency issues yep. that, be, that, that become no longer an issue are ushering in that the next the next step of what AI can potentially Absolutely. do. If Absolutely. we're talking about AI and the data center, and we and we've got that data center literally butted right up against a uh, a hospital, um, AI in I, I'm not thinking about AI in the hospital anymore. Now yeah. I'm thinking about AI in the operating. Room, Absolutely. AI in the doctor's augmented Absolutely. reality goggles. Absolutely. That's what it's it is. endless yeah. when you think about it. I mean, all industries are being impacted by AI yeah. because it's an opportunity to look at the past to determine the future, to I use it, data yes. as part of your analysis to better understand how you should build your business yeah. to be scalable. And so it, it, it's an interesting opportunity. But one point I do want to add on the challenges of urban, oftentimes I think there are misconceptions about what data centers are yeah. and what they are not, right? 1% currently uh, of the world's power is consumed by data centers. And people look at it and say, oh, that's a bad thing. But I say, okay, well, do you want to go back to fax machines? Do you want to go back to dial up? I mean, because yeah. you can't have it because both ways. Data. Right. Yeah. That, that, that's all part of this yeah. evolution. Yeah. The other thing that I think is a lot of municipality you've seen on the East Coast beginning to say, hey, not in my backyard. Well, yeah. whose backyard? Because yeah. we all are addicted to the speed yeah. of technology. And so the opportunity is to begin to educate local electeds really telling people the that this is component. something, yeah. the community component, you have to be relational, not just transactional. And I think this industry has been dominated by really smart people mm -hmm. that know how to design really complicated things. Yes. But I think there's also an aspect where you have to sit down, almost like a politician. Yeah. And there's a, a, a person that I worked with many years ago that went on to become president. You've got to build <laughs> relationships authentically so that you have an opportunity over time yeah. to have people really bought in to why this is important for a local community. Man, I love that message so much. I, I, I could not agree with you more. Um, as from, a, you know, from my seat on the PR marketing side, mm -hmm. that message, that story is ultimately what changes the, uh, the, the mystery or the mystique or oftentimes the, um, the, the wrong viewpoint Absolutely. of what a data center is. You know, this is an unsightly building that's sucking up the electricity and taking all of my resources and doing all that's of these right. things. Instead of, no, what happens in there is bringing the future to the businesses in this area. Think of the pandemic. Had it not been for the infrastructure that existed, right. people would not have been able to work remotely but, yeah. during COVID. Yeah. And so technology was a savior. Yeah. Imagine how COVID happened in the 70s, right? Yeah. Now, certainly uh, providers, overnight shipping companies and others would have been very happy. But in this current day, <laughs> yes. you know, day and time, yeah. we're looking at technology and allowed us to continue with the economy Think moving the way that it yeah. did. And so these are all facts that I think are very important and oftentimes get overlooked. Mm -hmm. I also think, you know, again, it's just educating people yeah. on why is this so important? Because if you go back in time, what people don't understand, they often fear. Go back far enough in time, right? That. They love would that, burn Greg. witches, right? Yeah, because yeah. they did this thing called magic. Yeah. Well, for a lot of folks, right? 
how you get your email, how your phone works, how your computer works, how your iPad works yeah. is in the realm of magic. Yeah. And so the things that we don't understand, we can fear if we're not educated. And that's why a public education strategy is so important for this industry to continue to grow. Craig, I see a lot of that former president in you. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do. I do. And he's I, a great man. He, I, I, he molded a lot of my views and I, help, was very helpful to me. I, I love it so much. And I, I feel that compassion. I feel that energy coming from you. Um, best of luck to you and all of your efforts. Thank uh, you. In the future, of course, thank you so much for being here. Thank you here. very much. You I bet. appreciate it. You bet. And thank you, viewers, for watching JSA TV. Stay curious and connected, and we will see you soon.